Hey what's up guys it's Apollo Uchiha here back with another part of what if Naruto was raised by Jiraiya and Tsunade and if you haven't please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you like the content of this channel and without further ado let's continue with our story. Two years after the Cubis attack if an outsider traveled to Konoha he or she would be able to tell of the catastrophe that hit the village two years ago caused so much property damage and took away so many lives the reconstruction efforts were already over most people had already stopped mourning their lost ones and continued with their lives unfortunately that didn't mean that konoha's inhabitants were more accepting of the little naruto people would often scatter whenever one of his three caretakers would take him on a walk through the village often between mummers but nobody was stupid enough to risk the wrath of the sun by speaking their opinions of the blonde toddler out loud. They couldn't be forced to show sympathy to him either. While the Tosage and the Slug Princess were outraged upon learning through Shizune that they seen Naruto as Naruto's jailer rather than his foster parents, they had to admit it. It was something illogical or stupid to think. Both Sani spent many of their late night sessions drinking and discussing ways on how to make population stop fearing Naruto. Speaking of Naruto, taking care of him became an even harder task once the little Jinchuriki learned how to walk. Despite his short, chubby legs, the kid was insanely fast, always running from one room to another, never talking and taking a moment to stop. They tried to keep him at bay with a baby fence, but he somehow ended up escaping. The only way to make him stay still for a prolonged time was for somebody to play with him and said person would end up utterly exhausted after an hour or so. Despite this, there was always somebody willing to play with him. The kid had a talent to bright the mood of anybody who spent more than a few minutes with him, and the few times in which the three adults were present at the same time were always the most fun and pleasant, and the only ones in which Naruto would be the one to fall asleep first. And Toddler was very full of energy in the eyes of the Sanins and Shizune. And today was going to be one of these days. After ending her shift at the hospital, Tsunade headed home with a smile on her lips. Shizune had recently returned from a mission outside the village and Jiraiya wasn't scheduled to meet one of his spies until tomorrow. The whole family would be together. She then stopped in her tracks after realizing the implications of what she was thinking. Wait, I'm actually happy to think that Jiraiya will be at home waiting for me. And I'm thinking of him as a family. During this time, they lived together. The two Sanin not only managed to repair their broken relationship, but they became even closer than when they were teammates. The nights they spent drinking and talking about their issues not only was a good way to vent some steam, but to get better acquainted with one another. She was starting to grow fond of the white-haired pervert. Hell, he had been good on his words and hardly did any kind of perverted things anymore, at least in her presence, at, at the very least. But that didn't mean that she was developing feelings for Jiraiya, right? Sanade pushed those thoughts aside the moment. Her house came into the view. It was time for a fun afternoon with Naruto. Hey everybody, I'm home, Sanade said as she entered the house and walked into the living room. Oh good, we were waiting for you, said Jiraiya's voice. Sanade was surprised to see that she, Jiraiya wasn't with Shizune and Naruto as she had expected. Young Konoichi and the blonde baby were playing with some toys at the other side of the room. Jiraiya, meanwhile, was alongside two small toads wearing black cloaks. One was green, had grey bushy eyebrows and a goatee of the same color, while the other was greenish-yellow, had a bulbous purple head and thick purple lips. I believe you already know Fukusaka and Shima, the two great sage toads, Jiraiya said as he motioned toads. It's good to see you again after so many years, Tsunade chan, Fukasaka said. You turn into a quite lovely lady, don't you? Shima said, Fukasaka sama, Shima sama, it's an honor to meet you again. Tsunade said solemnly as she bowed her head. May I ask what is the reason for your visit? The great toad sage has requested to see both of you and Jiraiya chan. Now that you finally came, we must head to Mount Miyaboku immediately, Shima answered. Well, we'll travel there via reverse summoning. Fukasaka added, wait, wait a minute, I don't have a toad summoning contract, how are you going to bring me there? The slug Sanin asked, don't worry, we have a solution for that, please give me your hand, Fukasaka said. Tsunade walked towards the old toad and did as she was told. Fukasaka placed his hand on Tsunade's hand, closed his eyes and focused his chakra. Sage art, seal of the toads, Fukasaka said as his hand glowed blue. 
Sonata felt something tingling in the palm of her hand. When the tour's jutsu was over, the kanji for oil, which represented Mount Miyoboku and was the kanji on Jiraiya's forehead protector, was engraved on her hand. That's a special seal that will allow you to be reverse summoned by the toads as well as to summon any toad you want. It will only last one day before it fades, but for now, currently endeavors, it will be more than enough, explained Fukasaka. Okay, we're ready to go, Shima said as she and her husband started to reverse summon both them and their summoners. In less than a second, Jira and Sonali were no longer inside their house living room and found themselves in the middle of the Mount Miyaboku. While Jira had been there quite a few times, Sonali spent some minutes exploring the immediate surroundings, marveling at the natural beauty of the toad's home. The place was filled with gigantic plants and mushrooms, beautiful flowers, and she had never seen before, nor knew they existed. Multiple rivers and streams flowed through the mountains. There were also many statues of toads scattered around the place, yet for some reason Sonare found the place oddly familiar. The Slugsanin then realized what was Jira's inspiration to de decorate Naruto's bedroom. So, what do you think of our home, Sonare? Chan, she asked. It's amazing. The natural energy from this place is simply overwhelming. There's so much life here. But you say it better than Shikoto Forest. Ma, don't ask her such a thing. Don't you see you're putting her in a predicament? Fukasaka said angrily. Oh, can it? Pa, it's not that we invite a non toad summoner to our place that often, and I just want to compare. Uh, better or worse aren't words that I use to compose both places. Guess that the word would be different, Sonari said, hoping that the answer wouldn't upset the toads. However, she wasn't going to badmouth the slugs either behind their backs, just appease their current host. So, you said that the great toad sage wanted to see us, Chura said, trying to get back to their current business. Oh, yes, you're right. Come on, let's not make Gamamaru-sama wait any longer, Fukasaka said as he led the way. Like that snail old geezer won't forget that he wanted to speak with the kids in the first place, Shima scoffed. While they headed to the spiritual leader of the toads, Fukasaka thought it was a good chance to bring up certain topics regarding their only summoner. He hoped on to the white-haired man's shoulder, Jirai-chan, since you're here again, have you thought that it might be a good chance to complete your Senjutsu train? Uh, maybe another time, Pa, Jirai replied uneasily. I'm kind of busy right now, you know. Always with that excuses. Hey, I am taking care of a baby right now, so cut me some slack. Were you taking care of a baby during the past 10 years as well? I didn't... I don't need it. I already mastered Senjutsu. Kazaka scoffed in return. Then you and I have already different ideas of mastering Senjutsu means. You mean both Ma and I? You need both Ma and I to enter and maintain Sage mode. Plus your control over natural chakra has plenty of room for improvement as well, Jirachan. Listen, I will finish my training, okay? Just, just not now. I need to focus on Naruto first and foremost. I understand, Chirachan, but try not to delay it for much longer. The difference between incomplete and complete sage mode could mean the difference between life and death. After a short trip, the two small toads and the two sonis were in front of Gamamaru, the great toad sage, who was sitting on a shallow pool. Snotty eyed at the large red toad in front of her, judging by the amount of wrinkles, warts, and nearly closed eyes. It was obvious that Kamamaru was very old. Some said that he was so old he even met and advised the Sage of the Six Paths himself, though they were mostly rumors. Kamamaru sama, Chirai chan and Snare chan are here, just like you requested, Fukasaka announced. Both Sanins sat at the same time as they bowed before him. Ah, I see, good. There is so much we need to talk, Gamamaru said, each word coming out of his mouth at a rather slow pace. Chura and Tsunade waited expectantly about what was about to come from Gamamaru-sama. They waited for a few minutes, but the old large toad didn't even say anything. Gamamaru-sama, Fukasaga said. Sleeping noises were heard, a lot of Zs. Chura and Tsunade sweat dropped. Wake up, you old geezer! Shimari screeched, startling Chura, Tsunade, and Fukasaka. But apparently waking up Gamamaru. Ah, uh, it's lunchtime already. Gamamaru disorientedly said, as he slowly looked around. Gamamaru-sama, you wanted to talk with Jiraiya-chan and Sonare-chan, remember? 
Bokusaka said once again, hoping to get everything back on track. Ah yes, listen up young ones, because there is a turbulent future ahead, both of you and the little tadpole under your care. Gamamaru said, Tsunade worried expect upon hearing those words. I don't care what happens to me, is something bad going to happen to Naruto? Young Naruto will have a hard road ahead of him. He will do great things and will meet terrible enemies. You will need to protect him from said enemies as long as he can take care of himself. We will, great sage, Shira stated with determination, Tsunade nodded as well. I have seen Konoha on fire. Divided against itself, friends will turn on to enemies, sons will fight their fathers, and behind the fire a one-eyed demon. Be aware of him, said demon will go after Naruto. You must protect him at all cost. I have nothing more to say. Return now to your home and meditate on my words, Gamamaru said before falling asleep once again. Jura and Sonade looked at each other as their brain processed Gamamaru's ominous predictions and what they could do to make sure everything was all right. Link break. Half an hour later, Jura and Sonade were sent back to their home. Much to their surprise, they found Naruto crying in his eyes out while Shizune tried to comfort him in vain. What's going on here, Naruto? Why are you crying? Shura asked and frowned. Upon hearing his voice, Jura, Naruto turned his head around and looked up at him. He stopped crying and his sad grimace turned into the brightest smile they ever saw. He wiped his tear, jumped from Shizune's lap and rushed to hug them. You're back! Naruto said as he scooped by Jiraiya. What's going on, Shizune? Tsunade asked, placing her hand on her lips. He saw you disappearing in a cloud of smoke and thought that you were gone for good. I've been trying to explain him that you would be back soon, but he wouldn't listen and believe me. The young Konamichi replied, Oh, my poor kid. Of course he thought that we left without even telling him a goodbye. Tsunade said as she took Naruto from Jiraiya's arm. Forgive me, sweetheart. I promise we will never do that again. Okay? Okay. Naruto said, wrapping his little arms around Tsunade's neck. Alright, enough of that. Who's up for our gamma night? Jiraiya said and everybody cheered in return. Link break. After a fun and lively game night, Shizune and Naruto went to sleep. Jura and Tsunade tried to, but they couldn't. Both of them couldn't stop thinking about Gamamaru's warning regarding not just Naruto but the world in general. Like usual, they were in the living room with a couple of bottles of six. So Naruto is in danger from a one-eyed demon. Does that mean that we should be aware of any one-eyed people we run into? Because losing eyes is quite common in our line of work, Jura commented as he emptied his cup of sake. My first choice would be Danzo, the leader or root. The only person with one eye that I know is Kakashi. Maybe he was talking about him. Sonata said, Kakashi has two eyes. Even if he only uses one at most of the time, plus he's a nice kid. He wouldn't harm Naruto. He was Minato's students after all. I and a huge fan of your books. And a huge fan of my books, yes, but I'm not defending him because of that, Hime. I know, I was just teasing you. Wouldn't that old frog could have been a bit more specific about the one-eyed demon? Some more hints could have been useful besides lacking an eye. First, Kamamaru is a toad, not a frog. Never call frog a toad. They didn't take it very good when I said it first. And second, Kamamaru doesn't have the context of the visions he gets. So all he can do is interpret them to the best of his ability. Well, that vision of his caught me on the edge. He told me that Naruto is in danger but didn't specify about what kind of danger and we can't protect him from everything. I mean, it's not that we can lock him down in the room or something. Even if you did, he'll find out a way. He always does, you know. Jira mentioned causing Tsunade to chuckle. But then again, that's nothing new. His parents, especially Minato, had a lot of enemies that would love to get revenge through Naruto. And he already has yet another bullseye on his back due to being the cubist in Churiki. And even worse than that. What also worries me was the part about Konoha's being on fire. Do you think that somebody is planning a, an attack on us again? It wouldn't rule that out. We're still recovering from the QB attack which made a number of our forces. I was, I was hoping our presence here serves as a deterrent for any village who might want to invade Konoha. I hope so. We may, we may not be the yellow flash, but the name of the sun still can inspire fear among our enemies. 
and that part about friends turning enemies. Do you think that we may be betrayed by one of our village allies? From what I know, our current allied village is Suna. But even with our recent losses, they still lack the numbers and powers to wage war against us, at least on their own. Maybe they can ally with one of the other three great villages, but I find that unlikely. Even then, maybe it would be so good idea to try to strengthen our tribes with them. Pay them a visit, mail some sake to the Kajakage, stuff like that, you know. Sake seems to be your answer to everything, Sonari. Because it works. I mean, remember when we returned here? How we couldn't spend five minutes without yelling at each other? Actually, it was you who did most of the yelling, though. Chira said with a cheeky grin as he poured some sake on an empty cup. Yet, when we started to have these late night drinks, everything became far smoother. Now I'm ha even happy to see that you're home when I get back from work. That's not enough proof of Sake's miraculous conciliatory powers. Oh, 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 of course. Sonali said in realization as a huge smile formed on her face. What? That's how we can make everyone accept Naruto. He only needs to go drinking with every villager here. Wow. Even in my wasted state, I still can see how much that idea sucks. Sonali smile disappeared and was replaced by an angry frown. And what is that, smart ass? Well, I might not know much about babies, but isn't alcohol like very toxic to them? We still have to wait until 16 years or so before you can do that. And even then, we'll have to drink a lot in order to befriend the entire village, you know. Damn it, I haven't thought that, Sonata said as she slumped on her chair and drank from her cup again. Oh well, I'm sure I can think something. I just need more inspiration. <laughs> hey, Hime, don't you think we... Maybe had enough tonight. Maybe we should go to bed. I will decide when I had to. Now come on. Keep the sake going. I have to forget the damn prediction of the damn frog. Toad. Whatever. Link breaks. Sonari sama. Are you awake? Come on, when you need to get up. You're going to be late for the hospital. She's in his voice, awaken the blonde sun. The sunlight coming through the window fell onto her eyes like being stabbed with burning hot daggers which didn't do anything good to elevate the massive hangover she was starting to notice she could swear her head would explode at any moment yes i'm awake sonari said in barely audible grumble stop yelling so much the slug princess tried to get up of her bed but couldn't she was something there was something that was keeping her from moving further inspection revealed that it was a rather large and defined male looking arm she followed the arm with her eyes and just as she feared said arm was attached to a man a naked man a man with white hair she knew very well while asleep there was a very white grin on his face talking into the account the fact that Sonari was also naked it didn't take a genius to realize what happened last night even if she didn't remember it nor she wanted to remember it anyway she wanted to scream but her extremely dry throat couldn't only produce a cough just how much did i drink last night the blonde Sanin asked her in hor horror. Covering her naked body with the blankets, Sonari tried to push the towards it awake. Chiraya! 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 Sonari said as she rocketed the white haired man. Each time with more force, Chiraya opened his eyes slowly, blinking several times until the accustomed to the current light. He ground, rubbing his head with one hand, effectively being victim of a hangover, just as bad as his drinking buddy. He then looked at Sonari and his mouth formed a smile. Good morning, Hime, Jiraiya said absentmindedly. Then slowly but surely, the more aggravated elements of the situation started to sink in. Upon realizing what was going on, he looked at Sonari, barely naked from with his eyes wide open as his face turned red. Whoa, what the hell? What happened? Trust me, I feel the same. We can talk about that later and make no mistake, we will talk about it. Now get out of here before somebody sees us, Sonari said, panic, right. Jiraiya babbled as he hastily started to pick his clothes from the bedroom floor and got dressed. Sonari proceeded to do the same. Sonari sama, get out of the bed already, Shizune voice said from the other side of the door. Even back in Konoha, I still have to be the responsible one. I'm awake. I still need a few minutes to get ready. Just don't come in. And what is taking you so long? Shizune asked as she opened the door and came into the room, only to be greeted with an image of her mentor and Jiraiya half-naked trying to get dressed as fast as possible. Bosani smiled at her sheepishly. Shizune let out an eep and 
quickly left, slamming the door shut. It's okay, it's okay, I didn't see anything, it just take all the time you need. Link break. To say that face breakfast that morning was awkward would be a massive understatement. They all ate their breakfast without uttering a word. Shizune feeding Naruto while she actively avoided looking at the two son in front of her. Sanade, however, couldn't bear to the silence anymore and opened her mouth to speak. Shizune, what you just saw, none of my business, Shizune said. Matter of factly, we're all just adults here. Just tell me beforehand so we don't run into more unfortunate situations. Ne? The young Konnichi said without turning her head to look at her mentor. This time it was Jiraiya who tried to speak. I, listen, she's an, uh, Sonata, Himi and I aren't. Do you think we should talk about that in front of Naruto? She's interrupted again. Both Sonis looked at the toddler happily enjoying his food and ignoring the conversation that was going on in front of him. They could pretty much be talking about Minato and Kushina and he'd pay as much attention. But then again, they had to admit Shizune had a point. That wasn't something to discuss in front of a little kid. Now if you excuse me, today I have gay duty, Shizune said once as she had finished feeding Naruto and eat her own breakfast and left. Uh, I think that I'll get going too. I don't want to keep my contact waiting. Hopefully I'll get some more hints on the Cupid attack. Jura said clearing dying to get out of that house will you take care of naruto uh yeah i'll have him with with me in the hospital daycare so not reply so see you later all right then goodbye Think break shizune was hoping that if she focused on her work maybe she'll remove the image of sonata and jira naked sh sharing the same bed but gay duty was so boring and uneventful that she couldn't distract her mind there's something else over the two years that sonata and her had been living under the same roof as Jiraiya Shizune had noticed that their relationship became smoother little by little. During the first few weeks, they used to argue a lot and tried to avoid each other as much as possible. If Jiraiya was in the living room, Sonade wouldn't go there until the dosage left first. If Sonade had and her were having dinner in the living room, Jiraiya wouldn't wait until they were finished before he would have dinner himself. The only two, the two time the two of them were together was when they spent time with Naruto. Then the arguments became less and less frequent until they disappeared completely. Sonata and Jiraiya were able to have civilized conversation and seemed to tolerate each other enough so they stopped avoiding each other as if they were finally getting used to each other's presence and enjoying it even. One day that the medic ninja apprentice couldn't sleep, she heard voices coming from the living room what she instantly recognized as the two sonnins. She then learned that whenever the two of them couldn't sleep, they would get up and have a drink and talk. Then this seems to become a tradition in their house, with both staying awake until late in night, regardless if they were suffering from insomnia or not, drinking and talking with each other. But even with how much their relationship improved, Shizune could never guess in a million years that they would end up sleeping together. After Uncle Don died, Shizune never saw her master showing that bearest of interest in the opposite gender. Again, due to her beauty and generous pairs of assets, Sonari attracted any and every man, which she ended up rebuffing sometimes without even looking at them first. Those who took her rejection badly ended up in the hospital. Alright, your papers seem to be in order. I hope you enjoy your stay in Konoha, she said to a merchant who had just crossed the gates. She then returned to her initial track of thoughts. Shizune had ambivalent feeling towards this morning's shock development. On one side, she wanted to sh shake that image from her mind. Sonade was the closest thing she had as a mother, and nobody wants to think about their parents having sex. But on the other hand, she was feeling happy that apparently somebody was able to tear down the emotional barriers the blonde son erected around her heart for years. She deserved to be happy. Ahem, excuse me, a voice said that snapped Shizune out of her trance. She blinked and saw a Gonoha Jonin looking at her. He had dark brown hair tied into a ponytail and a goatee. Oh, sorry, what can I do for you? Shizune asked the Jonin. My name is Yuki Minazuki, Jonin Sensei of Team 2. My team is about to take its first mission out of the village, the Jonin explained. All right, Shizune said as she wrote down everything Yuki said. I'll need the name of your Genins, please. Sure, there is Shinko Inari, Tenma Izumu, and Itachi Uchiha. Shizune was taken aback when she heard the last name. She then looked at the Genin. They were waiting a few meters behind their sensei. 
she saw a boy that was about 10 or 11 years old with gray spiky hair, wearing a dull blue shirt and black pants. Beside him was a girl of a similar age with the same hair color styled into two ponytails that curved upwards and was wearing a maroon t-shirt that exposed her belly, dark blue shorts and a cap on her head. And lastly there was another kid, much younger than the other two, whom Shizune identified as the kid she first met in the grocery store a year ago and saw a few more items whenever she went on a walk. Dachi-kun, is that you? Shizune asked. Oh hi Shizune-san, Dachi said as he waved at her. Are you a Genin already? Shizune asked, her eyes opened wide. Dachi just nodded. But how? Old are you at, actually? Seven and a half. But you're so young. Well, Itachi is quite talented. Yuki spoke up. I was quite surprised when they told me that he was the rookie of the year of his promotion. Shizune was left speechless. Not only this kid graduated five years before the average canon, but doing so as the best of his class was something beyond amazing. Granted, she knew that both Tsunade and Chiraya had gra graduated academy when they were just six, but she never expected to meet another prodigy of the same caliber. We're going on our first sea rank mission. It isn't great? Itachi said, beaming. Now, if everything is in order, I'd like to continue with our mission, please, Yuki said. Oh yes, of course. Good luck on your mission out there. You'll tell me how it went when you get back. Right, Itachi-kun? Shizune said as she waved at Itachi and his team. Thank you, Shizune-san. And yeah, I will. Itachi said, waving back. Guess that they weren't exa exaggerating when they talked about the powers of Uchiha. Hmm, wonder if under the Turkey of Snati sama and Shura-sama, Naruto-kun will be able to become a Genin that soon. Shizune amused to herself. Link break. Night fell over Konoha once again while Shizune and Naruto were asleep once again. Shiraya and Tsunade were having their usual late night drinking session. Except there was two key differences. The first one was that they were sitting in the opposite ends of the living room couch in an awkward attempt to put as much space between each other as possible. And second, there was no sake despite Bosani's undying adoration for the burning brew. They weren't going to take any chances after what happened the previous night. Chirac cleared his throat. So, how was your day, Hime? Good. Today came a pregnant woman who gave birth to triplets. Snade answered without looking at him. Oh, triplets. You don't see that every day, do you now? <laughs> Chirac replied. And how's your emophobia again? Good too. Therapy is working fine. I'm making some progress, even if it is at a slow pace. My therapist says I will be able to perform surgery again in two years or so. That's that's something great to hear. And what about you? How was your meeting with your spy? Good, I guess. He shared with me some information about a mercenary new group that seemed to be interested in the tail beast. I'll have to investigate that in the future. It's good to know that we're getting closer to- Oh, screw this! Snarri shouted, throwing her hands in the air. Fortunately, she didn't wake up the two youths sleeping upstairs. It is something I said? No, it's this. I mean, we're in our 40s and here we are, acting like a couple of emotional, emotionally disabled teenagers. Having some small talk in a pathetic attempt at ignoring what we did last night. You want to talk about it? Like hell I do, but before we talk, Sonata said as she walked towards the drinks cabinet and grabbed two cups and a few sake bottles. Let's have a drink. Sonata poured she, she herself and uh, Jiraiya a sake on, on the two cups and both sons drank them in a go. So, do you feel better? Sonata asked. Yeah, I guess, but I could do with another a cup. Jiraiya said. Sonata obliged and poured him another sake. Alright Jiraiya, now I want you to answer me honestly. No lies. Do you still like me? Shiraya said as he gulped down the second cup of the sake. Snade would accept a yes and no answer, but not even the Tosanin knew the extent of his feelings towards his former teammate. I, I don't know. I guess? You guess? Come on, Shiraya, try a bit harder. Take another drink if you need. I know I used to like you. I tried to get over my feelings for you since I knew we weren't meant to be together, but I thought that I moved on. Then plenty of shit happened, and suddenly I'm raising a kid with you. I thought that taking care of Naruto would be like doing a mission, but seeing you every day or our late night 
talks and drinks with Ignardo's parents. I think they rekindled those feelings. I see. What about you, Sonari? Do you find yourself attracted to me all of a sudden? Because I know that there is no man on this world who can trick you, much less force you to share a bed with him. I am not sure. But guess that I'd be an hypocrite if I didn't give you a specific answer after I forced you to give me one. I don't know but when it happened, but suddenly I started growing more fond of you with each passing day. I didn't know if it was just fondness or if it was something more. To be honest, I've been an emotional mess since I left Konoha. Shreya chuckled. <laughs> I can relate to that. Shreya, the rules I established when we started living together. What about them? Did I break any? No. That's what surprised me the most. You didn't do any of your research or any of the perverted stuff I was expecting you to do. Were you hoping to win some points with me by sticking to my rules? No, it's not. It's not it. Listen, what happened yesterday surprised me as much as it did to you. Then why did you decide to follow those rules then? I might not have been trying to woo you anymore, but I never stopped caring about you. I know I'm not the easiest person to live with, but that's why I had been trying to suppress my least admirable traits in order to give you an easy time. You deserved as much as that. I, well, thank you for that. I know I hadn't been the easiest housemate either. Looking back, I was a total bitch to you when we first moved here. You know, you could have set some rules for me as well. Eh? It's okay, I didn't find that unnecessary. Really? Wasn't there anything I did but you wanted for me to stop? A couple of things, but minor enough not to warrant something like a rule. Plus, those offenses aren't hard to ignore when the offender is so easy to the eyes. Jura said with a wide grin and shot Sonari a devious look. Sonari scowled and punched him in the shoulder. See? That's what I was talking about. You were doing so good and you had to ruin it. Come on. You wouldn't like me if I changed everything about me, right? I like you better when you're not a pervert. Ha! Huh. You admitted the like like me, at least. Bart, Snarty opened her eyes wide. Stunned, I did? After a few seconds of silence, she let a small smile to form on her face. I guess I do. There's no point in denying it. So, what do we do now? Do we go on a date or something? Actually, let's take this slow, okay? I might have admitted that I have feelings for you of some sort but still need to put my thoughts in order before we can take it another any other further step okay it's okay i've been dreaming for this moment for decades so i can't wait a little longer no harm done dress said good to know that as for now we might not go on a date but there are a couple bottles of sake that have on a date with our livers Sonata said as she poured more sake on her and Jira's cups. They spent the rest of the night casually chatting while drinking, resembling what they usually did during the previous nights. Nick break. She then woke up next morning as usual after getting dressed as she walked towards Sonata's bedroom. Sonata Sama, are you awake? It's time to get up. She then said after knocking the door, but there was an, no answer. She, she knocked the door again, Sonata Sama. Fearing for the worst, the young Chunin opened the door slowly and after working up some courage, she dared to peek inside. But much to her surprise, the room was empty and the bed was made. Weird. Sonari never had make wake up so early and made her bed. Oh well, guess that there's a first time for everything, Shinya said as she went downstairs. However, upon reaching their living room, she saw something way worse than the image of previous morning, which also made her realize why the bed was made. Sonari didn't sleep in her bed at all. Oh dear Kami, Shinya shouted in horror as she rushed back stairs. That's the only couch we have. And we're going to have a link break here. Three years after the QB's attack, it took them some time, but Jura and Sonari were able to sort out their issues and decided to give themselves a chance, thinking that things were slow at first, just as Sonari wanted. But they soon became comfortable with each other and their relationship moved way faster than anyone would have anticipated. And a an year after they made their relationship official to Shizune and Naruto, they agreed to marry. For Shizune's sanity's sake, they also decided to limit any activity remotely linked to sexual intercourse to their bedroom. The girl had an innate talent for finding them doing it, if you could call that a talent. While Sonari and Jura wanted a small 
intimate ceremony with their closest family members and friends. In the end, it became a huge event due to how many people wanted to witness their union. After the wedding was over, there were two consecutive days of partying across all of the Konha. And it would have been more if Sarutobi didn't use the Anbu to force everybody, especially other ninjas, to return to their usual duties. Jiraiya and Tsunade traveled to a village in the land of hot springs, which used to be a ninja village like Konha, but failed due to the lack of quality of ninjas trained there, and was converted into a tourist resort, which was for far more say as say successful. They had been a week and a half ago. Naruto was elated since today was the day their beloved parental figures would return from their trip. He had begged and cried to take him with them. It took nearly three hours until they convinced him to stop begging. The moment the door opened, Naruto immediately bolted from the couch. Shizune had it washed four times since the incident and dashed towards the door. Mom, Dad, you're back! Naruto cheered as she hugged Snorri's legs. Well, I was going to ask you if you missed us, but guess that there's no need to. Snorri chuckled as she bent it over to hug Naruto. Welcome back, you two. How was your trip? Shizune said. Couldn't have been better. The weather was perfect, the food was delicious, the service pretty nice, but all of it pales in comparison to the wonderful company, Jiraiya said as he pulled Snorri near and kissed her. Ugh, didn't you guys get enough fun time already? I don't need more mental scars. Uh, Shizune is right, Jira. At least wait until tonight. Snorri replied as she gently pushed Jira back. I make no promises, Jira said with one of his trademark perverted grins. What amazes me the most is how that place seems to be always summer. One day I'll find out why did they do to have a microclimate like that. You buy me a present? Naruto asked. It was your birthday not even two months ago. You already had a present, Snorri said, hands on her hips. Naruto's eyes then watered as his mouth curved up. Snorri sighed, rolled her eyes and produced a wrap box from under her jacket. There you go, brat. Naruto quickly snatched the box and unwrapped it, revealing to be a set of toy shurikens and kunas made of plastic. Yay, my first ninja stuff! Naruto cheered as he opened the box. We thought that maybe you could start training with the basics. You'll be enrolled in the academy in a couple of years after all. Jira mentioned, ruffling Naruto's hair. Naruto didn't say anything. He simply took his present and rushed towards his room upstairs in order to enjoy his new toys. Boy, I wish everybody else could be so happy with so little, Jira said as he saw his adoptive son disappearing upstairs. Then he turned his eyes to the young Konomichi. So did something interesting happen while we were out, Shizune? Actually, yes. I've been promoted to special Joni, the black-haired girl announced, even jumping in joy. Congratulations. You really deserved it, Jira said, patting her in the back. Hell, she deserved to be an actual Joni. Sonade added, a little bit upset. Tomorrow I'm going to have a talk with that old monkey and make sure that, please don't, I don't want everybody else to think that I got my promotion because of you. Besides, Okage-sama said that if I keep working hard, I can be an actual Joni within the next year. That's awesome. Come on, we need to have dinner out to celebrate your promotion, Jira said. It's not necessary, besides, aren't you try tired from the trip back? So shouldn't you try to rest a bit? It's not a front. Seriously, Shizune? Do I look that old? Is it my transformation working properly? Okay, okay, let's go have dinner outside. I'll go get Naruto ready while you to unpack. Shizune considered as she walked upstairs. And show more enthusiasm, damn it. We're going to celebrate your promotion. Link break. The next day, Jiraiya was summoned by Ananbu to the Hokage office. The white-haired Sanin already expected what his old mentor would ask, and he wouldn't like the answer. After waiting some time, Ananbu told that Tose that he could enter the office. Shizune was already at work, and Naruto was at daycare with Tsunari while he was here, waiting for Hiruzen to meet with him. Hiruzen was already waiting for him inside when he entered. Welcome back, Jiraiya. Take a seat. So tell me, how was your honeymoon? Well, that definitely wasn't what he was expecting to ask about him, eh? It was good. We had a great time there. We might go there again on one of our anniversaries or so, Jiraiya replied. Good to know, good to know. Though I'm glad that at least two of you, my students, found happiness with each other. You probably guessed that the that wasn't the reason I called you here. How is your investigation going, Jiraiya? 
Yeah, that was more like it. Truth to be told, I hadn't found anything that might exonerate the Uchiha from the Kyuubi attack. What I did found, however, was that there's a group that has been gathering information about the tail beast. They call themselves Akatsuki, Tra explained. Hmm, that's something worrisome. What did you learn about this group? Nothing much other than they are recently formed mercenary group. They managed to become well known in the past year due to their high rate of success and absurdly low prices. Many villages, both major and minor, are losing quite some customers due to this group. Horizon frowned and crossed his arm under his chin. We'll have to keep this group under close watch. Have they tried something like abducting a Chinchuriki from another village? From what I have heard, no. That's good. Well, we'll inform other villages about our discoveries. Maybe this isn't anything, but you can't never be too cautious, right? Yes, uh, I don't think they believe anything we might say and think we are trying to trick them. With the exception of Suna, our relationship with the rest of the villages, both major and minor, isn't exactly good, and Suna isn't giving me good vibes either. Actually, that may change soon. We make preparation for an alliance with Kumagakure. Jiraiya couldn't help but open his eyes wide in shock. I'll, are you sure about this, Sensei? Jiraiya almost shouted as he leaned towards Sarutobi. Indeed I am. The Raikage sent a few days ago a small retunee leaded by Kumo's head ninja. They wanted us to sign an alliance treatment. This doesn't smell good. Did you read the treaty? I did, and I found their terms to be reasonable. Neither me nor the council thinks there are a reason for not to sign the treaty. I see. But you don't think I should sign it, right, Jiraiya? Exactly. I mean, I can't give you a specific reason. It's more like a gut feeling. I mean, I don't find a bit weird that that regaholic jackass that is the Rai Kage would want an alliance with us all of a sudden. That smells fishy, Sensei. I know, Jiraiya. I think I did think the same thing. But if never learned to forget past transgressions and make an effort to create bonds with our former enemies, we will never attain true peace. Maybe the Raikage finally saw a reason. Besides, this can be beneficial for your ward. Beneficial for Naruto? Explain. I know that Kuno Kumogakure has two Jinchurikis. Both of them have tamed their tail beast and can use their powers without any risk. If this goes well, maybe in the future Kumogakure will share with us what kind of training they did in order to uh, achieve such feat. I know that Minato would have want Naruto to learn to use the power of the QB. If that wasn't the case, he wouldn't have used a different seal. If that's the case, I hope that I'm wrong. Naruto needs to be as strong as possible, and such training would prove invaluable. Besides, we will need other alliances besides Suna if this Akatsuki group is a threat to you, if you fear it as it is. And with Kumo and Suna on our side, maybe we can pressure Eva and Kiri to join us. Can you imagine that Chiraya, all five villages, finally unified and united? Sardami looked visibly excited at the prospect as if seeing the culmination of the work of a lifetime. It's a pretty good picture, Sensei, but with Kiri's ninja being more unhinged than ever and how much Eva hates us, it's unlikely. Unlikely doesn't mean possible, M my former student. Anybody would have said that. You marrying Tsunade was so unlikely, yet look what happened. As long as there's a chance of something wonderful, we should fight for it with all our strength, don't you think? I guess you're right, Sensei. Keep up with the Akatsuki. I have a feeling that the mysterious attacker who unleashed the QB was a part of that group. With enough luck, we might gather enough evidence to exonerate the Uchiha. Speaking of which, how are the Uchiha's doing? Sort of be expression sword. Sadly, not good. This seems to be an information leak, and the Uchiha's learned that they're being held suspect for the QB attack, and my onbo are hearing murmurs and rumors about the Uchiha's being potential traitors among the population. As you can imagine, Fugaku was far from amused. This is not good. The Uchiha will grow re restless, and that will only make them to look more suspicious on Danzo's eyes. That's why your investigation is so important, Chura. I decided to be lenient and let you enjoy some time alone with Tsunade, but now it's time to get back on work. We need information on this attack, and we need it as soon as possible. Or things get bad, Sarada was sternly said. The Akarsky leads seems to be the best one. I'll continue with that. Good, you're dismissed now. 
I have a treaty to sign. Lingbrink, unfortunately for the third, his hopes of peace would be cruelly crushed. The very same night the treaty was signed, a masked ninja attempted to kidnap Hiyashi's Yuga's three-year-old daughter, Hinata. Hiyashi killed the man before he could even get out of the Yuga compound. The kidnapper turned out to be the Kumogakure said ninja. Now it was obvious that the whole treaty was just a ruse to infiltrate a Kumo ninja on Konoha who could abduct a Yuga. The Yuaikage answer came quickly in the form of rather sketching letter demanding for the killer. Yashi Yuga to be executed to Kumo to be judged for attacking a diplomat, while at the same time mathematically denying any kidnapping attempt on their part. Refusing their demands would result in war. There was an emergency meeting at the Yuga compound. Besides the highest ranking members of the council hierarchy, such as Yashi Yuga, head of the main family, his brother Hizashi, head of the branch family, and their father, a clan elder from out of the main family, there were also the Hokage, Churaya, Koharu, Hamura, and Danzo. Our main priority is avoiding a war with Kumo. We haven't recovered yet from the QB attack. We can't afford going to war very soon, especially not after a village that strong, the Hokage declared. We all read that letter. The only viable solution for us is to me to be handed over to Kumogakure. It was me who killed the head ninja, so it should be me who should shoulder this responsibility, Hiyashi declared solemnly. Hiyashi, don't. We can't let the Byakugan fall into those bastards' hands, the Hyuga elder said. I agree. If we hand the Byakugan to the enemy, we will give them a weapon to use against us. We guarantee what guarantee we have that they won't declare war on us once they forced you to produce enough Byakugan users. Danza said, that's why we already have devised a solution. Hizashi will go in your place. We shall execute him in front of the right Kage and hand the corpse to him. This way, Kumo won't get the Byakugan and will avert the war. The elder said, upon seeing Hizashi's reaction, yet Hizashi already agreed with the plan. Are you really thinking in surrendering to their demands? So one of them commits a crime against one of our clans on our own village and we are the ones who have to compensate them? What kind of message would we be sending to the rest of the villages? That we let everyone to trample over us with impunity, Kohoru said angrily. I agree with the counselor Utsutane. Konoha must never kneel before potential. Fully but I'm going to say, but I agree with Danzo, Trash, and Danzo shot him a neutral look. This may set a dangerous pred predicament when other villages hear about this, but we'll stop them from making unreasonable demands under threat of war. But we can't afford going into a war, and we're interceded. Even if we win, we would be so weakened after that would be an easy prey for even the minor villages. Actually, I believe that the Raikage threat of war is just bluff, Jiraiya stated. What makes you be so sure about that, Jiraiya-sama, Hiyashi said. We just killed one of their higher-up ninjas on a diplomatic mission. That's a pretty valid excuse to wage a war, and at least one of the previous wars was waged over even lesser than that. If they really wanted a war, the fourth ninja war would already have been declared. Do you have any ideas, Shuraya? Yukage asked. As a matter of fact, I do, Sensei. Let's pay their bluff with one of our own. I believe that since neither Tsunade nor I officially went back on active duty, they probably don't know that we're back in Kona. Let him show that two of the legendary Sonin are back in business and see if he's so eager to wage war against us then. That's a dangerous gamble, Shuraya. While you and your team had built quite the reputation during the second war, it isn't a guarantee that it might intimate the Raikage. Guess that after living with Nare so much, they time sometime, something of her rubbed off of me. Hehe, <laughs> Churaya said with a chuckle. Fortunately, my luck will be better than hers. I like your plan, Churaya. It's good to see that. After all these specific ideas, Hiruzen surely filled your head with your still capable of something ruthlessness. Danza told him. Churaya raised an eyebrow, then shuddered. A compliment from Danzo. He never felt so dirty. Kagesama, what is your decision then? Amura asked. Sarabi closed his eyes and pondered his opinions and options for a few minutes. He finally reached a decision. We will follow Jura's plan. I'll send a letter to Raikage asking him to meet me on a neutral ground. Once there, we'll attempt your bluff. Next, link break. The next week, the Hokage and a group of composed of Jiraiya, Tsunade, Yashiyuga, Shikamaru Nara, Chicago Nara, Kakashi, Haraka, and Shibuya Burame were heading towards the land of Hot Springs, which would serve as the neutral ground where the meeting would take place. Several tunings were carrying the corpses of the head ninja on a stretcher, as well as the t other two Kumo ninjas that came with him. Ugh, they didn't have women my size in mind. 
when they made these goddamn plague jackets. She's in a grum snotty grumble, trying to cover her jacket over her massive rack, before finally giving up. If it was a man who did, I can guarantee he did. All men have women your size in mind at some point in their lives, Jiraiya said with a perverted grin. Snotty shot him a cold glare. Don't give me that look. I'm just dating facts. Both of them were wearing a green flake jacket over a blue long sleeve le- sleeved shirt, blue pants and a konaha forehead protector. I can't believe I let you make me agree to this. We have left this shit behind, you know. Snotty protested. Relax, he may. Shirab whispered as he placed a hand on her shoulder. We aren't going to fight, just to instill some fear into their bones. They will be over before you realize this. He decided not to tell her that Sardobi was wearing his battle armor under his Kokage robe. Sardobi also hoped that the meeting would end in a fight, but you could never be too cautious, especially with somebody so rage born as A. This better be right, Snarri replied in a threatening tone. Yashi's Byakugan located the Raikage and his entourage, who were already in the meeting point, a clearly clearing between a forest and a river. Everybody instinctively checked on their weapons, even if they weren't meeting to fight. After a few minutes more of walking, everybody else was there. He brought more people than us, Srade noted upon glancing at the group of Kumo ninjas. Focus not on quantity, but quality. Do you see the man with sunglasses and a scarf, and that blonde woman with a ponytail? Besides the Raikage, you should worry about those two the most. Let me guess, they're the Kumo Shinchuriki, correct? The Raikage brought the heavy hitters, I don't like it. Hey, so did we. Besides, the, this confirms my earlier theories. The Raikage wants to intimidate us as well. Now it all depends on who gives into a fear first, Sensei or Raikage. Upon noticing the Hokage's group approaching, the Kumo Ninja walked towards them. Both groups stopped at a safe distance from each other. So you finally come, Hokage. And did you brought the murderer with you? Good. Hand him over to us and we can get this over with. The Raikage said as he was tripping with impatience. Not as fast, Raikage, don't know. As yes, we are aware of your terms to settle this dispute. I decided and discussed with my counselors and we decided to reject them. What? The Raikage roared. Do you realize this means war, right? I haven't finished yet. Now you will listen and hear my terms. Not only you will cease your demands, but you will apologize to Yashi san, the Yuga clan head, for attempting to clap his daughter right here right now as a gesture of goodwill we will give you back the corpse of the head ninja of kumo so you, he can receive a proper burial as well as the two ninjas who came with him as you can see they received no harm during the time they were under our custody i looked he looked livid he was releasing so much killer intent that konoha ninja instinctively reached to their weapons the hokage however remained impassable then the Rakage appeared to calm down and chuckled I know what you're trying to do, Hokage. You got me there for a second, but saw through your trap. Still got give the credit to you for the effort, excuse me. Sarutobi tilted his head, genuinely puzzled. Tell those two subordinates of yours to dispel the transformation. They are not the real Tsunade and Jiraiya. They are only embarrassing all of you. Sarutobi is an eyebrow. I don't know what you're talking about. Those are the real Jiraiya and Tsunade. Oh, please. The guy posing as Shirai is putting some effort, but the Sonari poser looks in her thir- 20s, while she should look much older than that. Who are you calling old, you steroid monster? Sonari blowed as she tried to attack the Raikage. Fortunately, Jira managed to raise, restrain her. Calm down, him. Ignore him. He's not worthy of your time. Jira whispered to Sonari's ear. Well, if you believe I'm bluffing, why don't you check their identities yourself? Horizon said. I see your bluff, Hokage, and I'll take it. Darwi, come here, he shouted. A dark-skinned man with shaggy bl- blonde hair that covered his left eye looked on older than 18, who was carrying a rather large sword on his back, stepped forward. Yes, boss. Check if those two are the real Jiraiya Sonade, or if there are two other people as posing as I suspect. All right, the young man calmly said as he walked towards Jiraiya as he placed his hands on the white-haired man's shoulder and sent a pulse of chakra through his body and have th- that should have dispelled any transformation as well as any good jutsu in case of Jiraiya it was under one yet the dose remained the same Darwi looked at Raikage uncomfortably uh sorry boss but this man is under no genjutsu transformation the Raikage was trembling with fear now the woman Darwi moved towards the woman and hesitatedly a bit before pulsing his hand on her shoulder and shooting a chakra Besides shooting him a murderous clear, the blonde son was projecting an immeasurable amount of key intent. 
as if saying, go ahead, put a hand on me, I dare you. Still, Dari was dutiful ninja and didn't let Sonari anger to get in the way of falling boss orders. He repeated the process and Sonari started to change into a visibly older woman. Ha! I knew it! Hirakage yelled in triumph, but said triumph proved to be short-lived when Sonari changed any further. She was still Sonari, only with a few wrinkles. Well, are you happy now? Sonari barked at Darwi, who jumped back, startled. Ah, uh, boss, this woman seems to be Sonari as well. Darwi then turned towards Sonari again. Sorry for dispelling your uh, beauty transformation, Sonari-san. Sonari just scrolled in return as she quickly replied in the transformation. Darwi quickly returned to the boss side before the sun could lash out on him. Since when did those two rejoin Konoha? The Rakaga shouted his anger was all in high time. Three years ago, shortly after the QB attack, the village needed help and they had it and he did our call. In fact, they even married not long ago and have an adoptive son. Urizen com calmly replied, I even have pictures of him here. Wanna see them? He looks so cute when he tries to ride our pet pig. Chiraya mentioned, Chiraya, please, not all this looks cute. Sonari corrected. Anyways, now that the identities of my students are no longer any of issue, can we go back to the matter at hand? Hiruzen not bothered to hide his smile. Greeting his seat, Rakage pondered his options. He ployed to get the Byakugan was falling apart, and he couldn't see any way to save it. His intimidation tactics weren't working, and he, it appeared that the Hokage had realized that the threats of war were just that, threats, nothing more. Now, if Kimo went to a war against Konoha, the Rakage was sure that he could win, and they could win, but it would be a very costly win. Now that the two of the sons were back in Konoha amongst their ranks, and he didn't want to start a war in the first place, as much as it pained him, there was no other way, not other than to quit now. All right, Hokage, I agree with the terms, the Rakage said, almost spitting those words. He was a small Widened. I'm glad you could see reasons, Raikage Tono. Yashi-san, please step forward. The Yuga clan had moved towards them. He had his chin up high, and his face was sporting a smile of severity. Well, Raikage Tono, I'm waiting. The Yuga said in the almost mocking tone, Oh my, and the entirety of Yuga Kumogakure's behalf. I'm sorry for the actions of my representative on your village. Please accept our apologies. I look... It looked as if he was in pain. Darwi wondered why his boss and everyone else for that matter had such a hard time apologizing after all. Was really saying that short words that hard? Apologies accepted, Rakakitono. I hope this incident never happens again, though. Well, now that though everything is settled, we should head back to our villages and try to forget that this incident ever happened. Sarabi said, Wait a minute, Jura said as he moved towards the Kumo Ninja. It would be a shame if you guys went home empty handers after getting here so you can have this Jira and Rakage book Icha Icha violence the Rakage asked puzzled as he glanced inside the book all other Konoha ninja sweat drop that's right the second installment of my successful series will hit the bookstores next month but you can have a now new copy right now completely free and signed by your truly what is this smut you pretend to appease me with the badly written porn the Rakage roared Hey, the proper term is adult literature and erotic scenes, and as for pro poorly written, look, what I do with your stupid book, the Rakage said as he angrily tossed the book into the ground. No! Jiraiya roared. Time suddenly slowed for Jiraiya uh, as his beloved book fell to the ground with enough force to shatter upon impact. But then a miracle happened, and a pair of dark-skinned hands caught the book before it could touch the ground. Yes, saved! B, what the hell are you doing? The one who saved Jira's book was the ninja with the sunglasses and the scarf, one of the Jinchuriki. Come on, bro, don't be such a fool. This book just you threw is pretty cool. Now it was the Kumo ninja's turn to sweat up. The Raikage, however, wasn't in the good mood to get in an argument with his brother. Well, if you like it so much, then you can have it then. The Raikage said and he turned towards the rest of the everybody else. Gather your stuff, we're leaving and heading back to the village. Jiraiya then walked towards the Raikage's brother. Nice to see that there are fans of my book outside of the land of fire, Jiraiya said. He stretched his hand. Name's Jiraiya though. You probably heard it already. Killer B is the name and being awesome is my game. You know? Killer B replied. The book is sublime, but it misses some cool rhymes. Uh, that's nice. I'll keep in mind for the next book, but the, by the way, I wonder if I could ask you a favor. Jura asked. Killer B nodded. This was a risky move since it meant sharing sensitive information with a foreign village, but chances 
boss just to pop to good boss to kona kona has a jinchuriki too do you think that once he's old enough you could train him in order to control his tail beast i love to pow but i don't know if shell because you see my bro has to agree i see well anyway i had to try enjoy the book then killer b couldn't be happier not only have we got an exclusive each each book for free weeks before it would be for sale but they don't sign in didn't notice that he had even been staring at her boobs during the whole overdeal thanks kami for whoever invented the sunglasses link break A few days later the Hokage group returned to Konoha relieved that they had averted a war and they didn't have to surrender one of their bloodline members to an enemy village and despite his face remained as stoic as usual Hiyashi Yuga was the one who felt the most relieved his brother was already waiting for him at the compound entrance welcome back brother i believe that the trip was successful Hiyashi ventured to ask did it was thanks to Jura's plan The Hokage Sama's resolve. I believe we averted a potential disaster. Yes, you're glad. I'm glad to hear that. Come on. I'm sure Ikari Sama and Hinata Sama are dying to see you again. They walked through the front courtyard when some young main house boys and girls were practicing the gentle fist under the watch of a clan elder. Izashi, during the whole time I've been out there, has been something in my mind that I couldn't shake off. Are you really willing to die in my place? You were willing to died too in order to prevent a war sashi replied but it was me who killed the kumo ninja and it was me who kumo wanted besides you didn't answer my question the older twin said yes yes i was but why i thought you hated the main house and i do make no mistake but that doesn't mean i hate you you're my brother and i love you main house or not and i will be willing to die for you just like How you die for Ikari and Hinata? Isn't that enough? I die for you too, you know, branch house or not. I prefer if it wouldn't. I don't want to have your death on my consciousness. Hisashi replied, Come on, let's stop talking about that. We averted a war. The Byakugan is safe. None of us had to die. Isn't that a good thing? Yeah, you're right. Did something interesting happen while I was out of the village? Link break. At the same time, the Raikage as his ninja had returned to the village. So their moods were considerably less cheerful for obvious reasons while a wasn't a man who indulged often in alcohol now he could use some sake at least to forget the past few days he remembered he still had a few bottles of sake the lightning lord gave him as a gift of his appointment as raikage opening the door of his office he saw that there was a man already there more precisely the man who started all this mess to begin with a young man with shaggy white hair pale skin and had his eyes closed for some reason to maybe man was stretching it since he couldn't be older than 16 back already rakage dono the man, young man's lips formed a you smile you smile and i guess that your contingency plan failed rakage slammed the door closed and walked towards the intruder trembling with fury what are you doing here i wanted to check the progress with the mission that's all but even if you didn't say anything i can guess that then it in failure so you failed to capture the byakugan princess and failed to produce me a pair of byakugan disappointing the raikage fury contorted in to none and grabbed the man by the robe's collar watch your mouth brat or you will find that my rage is all but disappointing is that how kuma treats his dear client the man replied not losing his school this is the way kumo treats those who piss the raikage and look at me in the eyes when i talk to you i'm afraid i can't do that due to some impairments the man said opening his eyes revealing two empty eye sockets even the raikage was startled by such horrible visage and released the white-haired man and instinct instinctively even if you fail the mission in every possible way you can keep the payment of your wish let's hope i can find somebody who can actually help me in my endeavors and with that the man suddenly vanished as if he was never there to begin with now i really need to drink link break back in konoha later that night sunari and jura were in the bed on each other's arms trying to sleep the slug princess then started to giggle which welled into a laughing fit may i know what do you find so funny all of a sudden he made jura asked It's just I can't believe you tried to promote your book back then. Sonata said between laughs. I mean, we were trying to stop a war. You tried to sell them a porn. It seems sur- surreal. It's not porn. It's adult literature and with erotic scenes. How many times do I have to repeat myself? Chara complained. Besides, that Tinchurki was a fan of my book and I almost convinced him to train Naruto. Sonata 
suddenly turned a giraffe with a look at him with her eyes wide open. Really? Because if Naruto learned how to use Kyuubi's chakra then, unfortunately he has his hand tied. He needs the right Kage's permission first and I doubt that such a thing will happen anytime soon. Though so I do plan to train Naruto to use the Kyuubi's chakra, if not so my, then myself at least. Really? Do you know how to do such a thing? Yes, I collected some scrolls about Tail Beast and Shuriki and have some hints that might be useful. I hope you can teach him. Naruto going to need all the help we can give him. Naruto will grow up into a strong ninja, just like his parents. You'll see that when he grows up. They both kissed and within minutes they fell asleep. If they only remained awake for a couple of more minutes, they would have noticed that the crystal on Sonata's necklace started to glow with a dim teal light. As this is where I'm going to be leaving off this part guys. I hope you like this one and if you do please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And without further ado let's end this video. And this is Apollo Uchiha and I'm signing out. Peace.